Hi guys, and um, welcome to update number one on my new ISM forum Cold War group build entry. So, what am I going to do? Well, I am building the new tool from Airfix 172nd Hawker Siddeley Harrier GR1. Iconic Cold War aircraft for the RAF. Um, the first operational vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to go into operation, and other than the American Harriers, which were obviously stem from the same thing, uh, pretty much the only one. I believe the Russians got something into service, but it was never as good. Um, yeah, so Airfix have brought out their new tool of this kit, and as with all their new their new kits, it's you know it's really good. There, it's uh, I'll show you in a second, but yeah, really really good kit. And it's engineered in such a way that with the addition of two sprues and a slight change in the instruction sheet and also a different set of decals, they've now released the GR3 kit as well. Um, so actually the kits are exactly identical, as I said, bar the addition of two extra small sprues in the GR3 kit and some tweaks in the instructions. Because the main difference between the two variants was simply... a I believe the engine may have been slightly more powerful, but I don't even think it was. So I think the main difference was purely in the nose. Um, the GR3 had that slightly elongated nose which carried a laser designator in it, which allowed it to carry uh, laser-guided weapons and presumably laser targets for other aircraft as well. And I believe it had some... I think it was slightly more suited for kind of NBC-style warfare. I think it had some more countermeasures or something because the tail fin has a slight different sensor array in it. It could also carry sidewinders which I don't think the GR1, GR1 could. And it had an in-flight refueling probe optional which so not huge amounts of changes between the two and actually I think the two were operational side by side. Um, however the GR1 never saw any combat. The GR3 as we as we know is the what you saw buzzing around bombing the hell at the RGs in the Falklands. Um, so it was very successful there. So, uh, for those who don't know, uh, in during the Cold War, obviously Germany was split roughly in half, and the Russians had a communist side, and the the French, the Americans, the British had the other side, which was democratic. And so NATO positioned a lot of forces within Germany there because they assumed that if Russia was going to invade through Europe, it was going to do so through the, the German channel there. So, they also had this idea that if, if it came to all-out war there, that within 24 hours, all the permanent air bases in Europe would be destroyed. That would be one of Russia's first targets, would be to knock out all the air bases. In comes the Harrier and its ability to literally hide in the woods. And so that's what they did. They 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 made short runways in some cases, and they used forest roads, and they basically hid their Harriers in the woods, um, covered them in cam nets, put metal decking down on, on bits of soft ground, and yeah, had little Harrier hides, they called them. So that's my idea, is model a Harrier hide. Um, with the GR1 under the... Under the so I'm going to have... Um, a cam net and the GR1 inside it. I've got some ground crew figures, so I'm going to spark some ground crew around. I've got some photo etch uh, boarding ladders, which I'll show you in a second. I have the Harrier position inside this car, this this cam net. A bit of rough roadway outside it, and then a GR3 on the roadway near the entrance. And then what you can see in front of you is a Airfix 176 scale Bedford tactical aircraft refueler. Basically, it's a refueling truck based on a Bedford truck, based on the Bedford uh, MK series truck. And these were specifically designed and then in use for operational refueling of aircraft and helicopters under operational conditions, including you know hires in their in their heights. So it's a perfect kit for what I'm looking to do. And as you can maybe tell, I'm looking to position one Harrier in the hide, the other outside it. Both of them being refueled by the by the truck. Some ground crew around, uh, behind the hide on so it'll be on a display base, uh, kind of yay size, I don't really know yet for sure, and there'll be some trees around the back of it to, to give it that woodland setting. So that's the idea, 
And where am I at the moment then? Well, as you can see, the um, Airfix uh, truck has been built up and primed. However, I don't have the right shade of green, so it can't go any further than at the moment. So, however, it built up nicely. Um, no major, no major problems really. I don't know how old this kit is. It's not a particularly new kit, I don't think. Um, it came in an old style box, um, but actually, it was relatively flash free, and it fitted really well. I mean, it's a truck. How hard could it be? But, I mean, things like the panels that make up this, um, you know, it fitted well. So I'm looking forward to painting that. Um, there is wheels for it as well, but they're they're over there. Oops. So I'll see if we can maybe just put this together quickly for you. I'm sure you can imagine what it's going to look like. There we go, little truck. Pretty cool. It's neat and dinky. I like it. So that's that. And this is where I'm at with the GR1 which I decided to build first. So you maybe can't tell, but it's been primed. The, as you can see, the back where I was holding it hasn't been, so uh, there was a couple of areas I was then going to just sand smooth and have finished priming it. So that's just, it's pretty much, it's a primer stage basically. Again, I don't actually have the right colour paints at the moment, so what I think I will do is pre-shade it, and then that's as far as I can take it for now. So I'll get it as far as I can before I really have to stop through not having the right colours of paint, which I will get in the future. So it's a really nice kit, it built up really well, There's no, there was no fit issues, there was no gaps as you come to expect from Airfix. Um, the seams were relatively easy to sand, sand back. And actually what's quite nice is that compared to some of their, shall we say, older new tools, when they were coming out with obviously their nice recessed panel lines, but some of the detail was maybe a little soft and some of their panel lines were almost like trenches. These are a lot finer, I mean this is... You know, these are a lot finer. These are much more on scale with, you know, your other what you'd expect from some of the other sort of top end, top end manufacturers. And obviously, you get the nice fit with that. And yeah, as with all Airfix kits, it's one seventy two. It's not that complicated. Some of the other manufacturers, I feel, if you built the same kit and it was from Hazagawa, it would cost you three times as much, and it would have twice as many parts. But when it's built up, it's not going to look any different. You know, it's higher. And so, it's nice. I mean, this is a bit... That's not Airfix's fault. That's, that's just me. That's definitely going to break off at some point before I'm finished with this. Um, I'll show you how I've painted the cockpit. Uh, again, unfortunately, it's still decal for the... Um, you can't even see it. It's painted a dark grey and there you can just see one of the decals on the instrument panel but it's buried so deep in there it, it kind of almost doesn't really matter. Uh, I've done a touch of welding, it's had a black wash. There is two, there is sidewall detail, like kind of ribbing and there is um, console detail, decals on each side of the cockpit there but as I said it's so tight that you can't see anyway so. Um, the one thing I don't like is that it asks you to put this section in which has the rear undercarriage doors, which are moulded closed, and there's actually no possibility of having them open. However, I do believe that when the main when the main gear is down, those those doors close back up again anyway. So, whether your gear is up or down, those doors are actually closed anyway. They're only open for the transit the transit of the the undercarriage, which will come out there. And there's another little door which will go on there. Uh, this is for the air brake, which is not positioned yet. So we've got two cannon pods here. Uh, I am having it wheels down, I just used the blanking, oh, the, you get two separate doors for the open position on the front, so I just used this as a blank to, because the front wheel wheel is currently painted because it's part of the intakes. Uh, so, yeah, what I don't like is it asks you to put this whole section attached to one side of the, the fuselage first, and um, what it means is that when you put the two bits of fuselage together, you get a bigger gap on one side than the other. Um, so I'm a little bit annoyed about that because I don't want to fill it because there, that's the edge of the door. There should be a, some form of gap there, so I don't want to just fill that in because that wouldn't that wouldn't look right either. And I'm thinking, unfortunately, the bottom of this aircraft can be light as well, so you can't even really hide it. But I think once the wheels on and the speed brakes and the air brakes in place, you'll possibly not notice it so much and 
Might have been painted and a little bit weathered. Also, it's on the underside of the aircraft. It's not. The, it's not the end of the world. What I'll do is on the GR3, I'll really try and see. Here's the step here. I ask you to attach this bit to one side first. So what I'll maybe do is. Now I know that for the GR3 when I build it, I'll keep that in mind. So really nice kit. Although I learnt my lesson from when I built a Harrier before. I'm leaving the pylons off for now and the undercarriage because this thing, because it's got all these, is a bit of a pain to mask the lighter underside colour when you've got these um, pylons on and things. And and the wingtip wheels, for example. And they uh, take, there's decals, big decals to go on the bottom of here as well, which, so I'll put them on first, then I'll add the pylons. So I've got the pylons, drop tanks, rocket pods there um, to, to, to go on. I added a little touch of extra detail onto the nose wheel, a little, I found a picture online of the Harrier nose wheel, I had a little kind of, I don't know what it is, it's a thing, and I made it out of plastic card and stuck it onto the front gear leg and a couple of bits of wire for um, for detail. Um, that's all I've done for the GR3 so far, is the cockpit tub and the ejector seat. The next stage is to detail up the ejector seat a little bit. They're really nice actually in the kit. Uh, I've been looking at pictures of them online, so the moulded on detail on the side of the seat there is pretty much all there is on the real thing anyway. Uh, bar obviously, as normal, is missing seat belts and the activation handle, which I've added from some wire there, as you can see between the two points. So this is the GR1 seat, that's obviously, obviously exactly the same. So I added some Tamiya tape seat belts. And also, to me, I take the blue loops there are actually the leg restraining loops. I believe you put your legs through those, and then that's what, when the ejection seat uh, fires, it automatically tightens all of the belts up, and it tightens these ones automatically, and it basically stops your legs flailing about as you, as you eject. Also, a nice touch, which I've never seen from Airfix before, is ejector seats often have quite prominent kind of warning labels and stuff on the top of them. And the kit actually comes with two decals for the top of the ejector seat, which adds a nice little detail, which kind of helps make it look uh, even better. That's a nice touch, that little red red and white uh, warning sticker, so that's nice. So the next stage on this is to add the Tamiya seat belts and stuff, and then uh, get that painted up, and start on the GR3. And just quickly, here's the different sprues. So what you're getting is a, a different tail cone, um, refueling probe, a centerline pylon, uh, sidewinder pylons. Now you can just use, you still get the rocket pods, so you can choose to have drop tanks and rocket pods or drop tanks and sidewinders on the GR3. You get an alternate tail, and you can see we've got an extra sensor lump here, which we don't have on the GR1. Um, we've got a camera pod for the center, which goes between the, the Gun pods, if you want to have them, sidewinders, different piezo tube, uh, some kind of other sensor antenna which is not on the GR1, and two different nose cones. Uh, this one has a slight different lump on the bottom here, and I believe this is because in the kit you get uh, decals for one based in Germany and decals for one during the Falklands War, and the Falklands ones seem to have these little, this little. Uh, extra lump under the nose which this doesn't have. I don't know what it is however I'm doing the German version so I'll be using this nose cone. So that's where I'm at. Oh well just quickly these are some of the extras I've got. Um, Bren gun, photo etch, uh, ladder. Luckily they're one piece so they shouldn't be too hard to fold up. There is instructions behind there. Um, so there's boarding ladders there. Each one, each aircraft will have a boarding ladder on it because they're not going to be in flight and also 172nd UK uh, removable for the flight tags just add a little bit of extra detail to the to the plane since they'll be on the ground so sorry this is nearly 15 minutes now I'm gonna shut up um, sorry it's been a lot of waving around looking at a green map but hopefully you've um, enjoyed that hopefully it's explained enough where I am with my current build and what my kind of plans are with it and I hope you'll follow it along both here on YouTube and over on the ISM forum. If you go to the Cold War group builds bit, it's called Airfix GR1 slash GR3 diorama, I think. So I look forward to seeing your comments there. I look forward to seeing your comments on the video. Please like the video. If you if you like, please subscribe. Um, 
thank you to all my new subscribers and I'll see you in the next